Hello, and welcome to Cal Parents Facebook Live. Today, our guest is Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students, Joseph Greenwell. My name is David Ortega, and I'm the Director of Parent Services and Communications. I am a proud alumni, and I've been a staff member on the Berkeley campus now for 24 years. My wife and I are, uh, are, are proud parents of a third year and very proud to call ourselves Cal Parents. The Cal Parents program is the primary resource for parent support, communications, and engagement with UC Berkeley. Cal Parents connects families with volunteer opportunities through the Cal Parents uh, Ambassadors program and also invites parents to engage with Berkeley philanthropically. To learn more about Cal Parents, please go to our website, calparents.berkeley.edu, and like us on Facebook. Tell your friends about us. Our objective with uh, Facebook Live is to bring Berkeley's outstanding faculty and staff to you for a conversation each semester. This is a live conversation, so please ask your questions in the comments section below, and we will try our best to answer your questions on the air. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Today, we are very happy to present Joseph Greenwell. Joseph joined Berkeley in 2014 as the Associate Vice Chancellor and Dean of Students. Joseph, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how your office supports Berkeley students? Thank you, David. Um, hello, Cal Parents. It's great <laughs> to not see you. You get to see me. Um, it's an honor to be here. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, so I'm the Dean of Students, and so I'm the Dean of all students, uh, including yours. And uh, I have the opportunity of partnering with an incredible team uh, of professionals that provide a variety of resources uh, for your student. Um, they include the Career Center, so helping students to engage in their own career development and uh, in experiences. Uh, the Public Service Center. Uh, the Public Service Center does a variety of service learning projects and programs and services uh, throughout the city of Berkeley, uh, throughout the community, and also uh, in cities like DC and the Magnolia Project, uh, which is in Louisiana. Um, I also work very closely with the AHC Student Union uh, that oversees this wonderful new facility uh, with MLK um, being reopened at the new Eshelman, and then also has within it the LEAD Center, uh, which has over 1,000 student organizations, fraternity and sorority life, uh, Cal Debate, CERC, and of course, one of the most stellar student organizations in our country. Um, other things that I get to partner with and work with uh, also include uh, student conduct, uh, and working in an educational frame with that, uh, working with students in crisis, uh, with student affairs case management, our Path to Care program um, on campus. Uh, we offer student legal resources as well. And then also onboarding all of our students through new student services and all the programs that we have to offer as part of the first year experience. Um, and I try to be as available to your student as I can as the dean of students, as their dean, when they have a hard time figuring out how to navigate and where to go to try to get them in the right place and get to the right resources. So that's a little bit about me, David, and I'm more interested in hearing what you want to hear about, and so I think we have some questions in order to get this going for us. So our first question is from Usha uh, from San Jose, California. Hi, Usha. I hope you're doing well. Um, what are the prospects of a neurobiology undergrad major to get into corporate world? Well, to be honestly honest with you, Usha, I, you know, we have stellar programs. I can't tell you exactly uh, the market for that particular niche. What I can tell you is that your student um, should be working very closely with uh, faculty and creating those relationships with faculty for references and being able to uh, create that network. And also we have one of the best career centers in the country. 
um, and to work with um, the Career Center regarding career advising in order to get your student to be putting themselves out in the best way they can via their cover letter, or their resume. Uh, we offer a variety of um, career fairs as well throughout the year. Um, and so I recommend that your student go to those and meet employers. Um, even if your student is not quite ready for the job market, I actually recommend the students start looking at careers from the moment they get here and start practicing and engaging with employers. And so when they are ready, they're practiced and well rehearsed and can get those services. Um, but specific to neurobiology, you know, we might do a follow up with you and get in touch with a faculty person and get you more information specific to that field. Why don't we go on to the next question? From Gloria, uh, hi Gloria, Gloria is from Venice, California. Across the UC system, uh, increase in staff for mental health services was to be implemented in fall of 2016. According, uh, accordingly, UC Berkeley was to have received the largest increase, adding additional staff of 10 at the Tang Center. Uh, the Tang Center, if you don't know, is our student health services. Um, has this been put into place and how has it impacted providing students with much needed care? Great question. Uh, this has, we have started to put this into place. Um, so we have, uh, this year alone, we have already gone through the process and have been successful in hiring six counselors. And we're in the process of hiring four additional, which will get us to that 10 uh, by the end of this year. Um, so that's been great. And with the increased uh, staffing, what ends up happening with that is we see a decrease in wait time uh, for our students and with their appointments. Um, I have to give the caveat though, in case you hear from a student that still has to wait, uh, we have seen an increase in our student population as well this year. Um, so um, even though that time has decreased, uh, we still have more students now in which that we're serving uh, in that capacity. Uh, the other aspects that came, uh, not just with that funding, but with other fundings, uh, just so you know as well, as far as access, is now uh, we provide counseling. The Tang Center is open seven days a week, and we've extended our after-hour program as well. And we also, students don't just have to go to the Tang Center as the facility itself to get support, but we now have satellite offices, 10 uh, to date, more to come, throughout the campus in strategic places so the students can just drop in as well uh, and not have to travel across campus, for example, if they're on the north side in order to get to the south side to get to Tang. I hope that helped with your question. Next, we have Kirsten. Uh, hi, Kirsten. Uh, Kirsten's from Dana Point, California. How is the student experience at Cal different from previous schools you have worked? Uh, first and foremost, um, I want to answer that question by first thanking you uh, for allowing me to have the opportunity to work with your students. Because that's first and mm -hmm. foremost how it's different in that I feel, I believe, I know that Cal students are the most special students on this, on this world. And I worked at some great places and with some great student populations. And I, what I always like to say, I used to work at a campus is down the road. Uh, that we speak not its name. Um, and, uh, and that was a great opportunity. And those students, just like our students, were extraordinarily passionate and innovative and academically just incredible students. And then I've also worked on another campus that also had incredibly academic students, but had such passion for social justice and equity and changing the world. And what we have on our campus is students that elevate in both of those arenas. And so we have students that are really trying to take the, what they're learning in their academic classroom in order to transform uh, not only our campus and the Bay Area, but our world. Um, and that's extraordinarily powerful, not just for me as a dean of students, but for your students to be able to engage with peers um, at that level. Um, the other thing I would say is Berkeley has an incredible array of opportunities for students to get engaged with and to find their own sense of home while here at UC Berkeley. Um, as you're aware, UC Berkeley is a big place, um, but there's so many opportunities to get involved, whether it be in a student organization or whether it's like a dance group or you know one of the academic programs to get engaged in research. 
uh, to get engaged in the residential community if they're part of the residential uh, life program here on campus. Um, there's a variety of ways that we create community on this campus, and I find that to be very um, special comparatively, just the array and the amount that we provide our students versus other campuses that I've been on. So those are a couple. Uh, I could go on for hours on that one, but we'll go on to the next question. Uh, Jeffrey Langer uh, from Visalia, uh, California. I think I said that wrong, but um, I need to go there, clearly. Haven't been. Um, my question is this. Uh, since there is a lot of unrest locally involving politics, uh, what measures are pl uh, in place that maintain the safety of my daughter and other students on campus and in the residence halls? Um, Jeffrey, I really appreciate that. Um, first and foremost, I, you know, a lot of people ask me, what do you do as the Dean of Students? What is it? You know, and I, I do a lot of different things on the campus, but first and foremost, what I see my role is I am looking out for uh, the safety and the well-being um, of all of our students. Um, and so that, this question is particularly important to me uh, in that respect. Um, there is a lot of civil discourse happening on our campus and to be honest, some incivility uh, that has been happening in the local area uh, that has and also happened on our own campus. Um, around any of those things, first and foremost, um, around safety in general, uh, what I would say is we have an incredible police force. <clears throat> I um, have the opportunity of partnering with them in a variety of ways uh, around student life here at UC Berkeley. Um, and they come with a framework clearly of safety and student safety, but also understanding about what it's like to work on a college campus and that student experience and being able to work with them. Um, I've always said to students, I'm going to broaden this context around safety in general, because I think a lot of parents have questions around safety. Um, but first and foremost, if you ever feel like your safety is in jeopardy, um, is to always go to UCPD, or if you're off campus, Berkeley Police Department. And even if it's after the fact, to file a report and, and to work with the police in that respect. Um, in addition, regarding any kind of student activism and things of that nature, um, there's a variety of things beyond the police that are put in place. Um, I'm often um, in um, those spaces, uh, if it's not me, my associate dean, or other members of the team, and, and what we are there to help de-escalate whenever conversations start to get heated or escalate. Um, so we're there to kind of help those students, or if it's a student and a non-student, or whatever the situation might be, to continue to kind of de-escalate the situation. It hasn't gotten to a point of safety or concern at that point, but making sure that people have the opportunity to voice their opinions and in a safe environment uh, in that respect. Um, again, we partner very closely with the police. They are oftentimes available and around um, in any times of situations like that. Um, so if there was a safety concern, then they would immediately be put in place uh, in that space. Um, the other things what I would say is around safety in general is I always tell students some helpful tips. Uh, unplug uh, when you're walking around, uh, particularly if you're walking around by yourself. Use our resources. We have a great shuttle service. We have the bear walk program. Um, but you know, you, there's no reason to feel like you ever have to walk alone at night. Uh, so make sure that you're using our resources and get connected and just be smart um, and kind of be aware of your surroundings and what's going on with you and um, you should be okay. And if things do happen, like I said, make sure to report them. And if your student needs support beyond the police piece, then let them know that they can re outreach to me and I'll make sure that they're getting the right support that they need uh, around whatever that situation might be. So I hope that was helpful. All right. All right, we got our next question here. This is really great. This is super exciting. Um, Really enjoying this. Uh, so our next question is coming not too far down the street, uh, close to that school I kind of used to work to work at in Santa Clara, California. Uh, this question is coming from Seema. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, so the question is, what is a good way to stay connected with what's going on at UCB? Uh, I would like to be more engaged, get email updates, and etc. So one thing is Cal Parents. Um, so 
um, you met David, and a great resource for you. But Cal Parents uh, is here to help uh, you as family members, as Cal family members, not just parents of Cal students. You are a golden bear as well in order to get engaged um, with the campus. And so there's a variety of things. There's oftentimes volunteer opportunities, there's a variety of events and activities uh, that are hosted uh, for that are specific to parents. Um, clearly, you can go to our university calendar and website. Uh, there's all kinds of activities happening there um, in those spaces. Um, and I th there's a variety of ways of getting connected in relation to if you have feedback or ideas um, around students and student life, for example, I'd be very open to hearing that and getting that information uh, or trying to figure out how to get engaged on campus. Again, I would work with David and figure out where we can best um, utilize you as far as res uh, resources and services based on your own interests and what, based on what's happening on our campus and what's available at that time. Um, so I'm super excited Tima, to hear that you want to get more engaged with Cal uh, because really uh, we need that. We need that support and we need that partnership to continue making Cal the number one public institution in the world. So thanks for that. All right. Next we have Janine. And Janine is from Brooklyn, New York. Wow. Hi, how's the weather uh, in Brooklyn? Hopefully it's nice. I know it's been a pretty mild winter from what I understand. My best friend lives uh, out that way. Um, so Janine's question is, my daughter is seeking an internship, which is great. Um, she's interested in medicine and neuroscience. What is her best contact person? So first and foremost, I always, around internships, um, I would first start with um, the Career Center. Um, so the Career Center, one of the things that they uh, work and help facilitate is an internship program um, and also what's called an externship program. Um, an externship is usually a shorter period of time, might maybe over a break, uh, in order to kind of get a sense of the industries and fields you might be interested in, whereas an internship is a more extended period of time, uh, and some of those might be paid, some of those may not be paid, um, but those are opportunities through the academic year as well as a lot of the students take internships during the summer uh, in order to get real life experience uh, while you're still here at Cal. So I would start there. Um, the other helpful tip around career uh, and around internships, as well as just jobs in general, is to make sure your student has registered with Handshake. So uh, they can get connected with it right on the Career Center website. It's really easy to do. It's actually a new resource for our students and an updated resource for our students. And what's really great about it is your student can put in all their information, their resume, you know, what they're looking for, kind of, you know, everything about them and their profile. And then employers are actually in there too and can actually put in a, a variety of things that they're looking for. And if your student's a match, it'll automatically pop up and that employer can reach out directly to your student. Um, so it's a very dynamic program. Um, it's, uh, we launched it um, at the beginning of the year and it's, it's really an opportunity to really showcase yourself and be out there to employers without having to do anything other than doing your profile and getting it going. And so I really, really recommend that for all students. <laughs> it doesn't matter what year you are, for all students, because you don't know what opportunities might become available for your student. So please check out the Career Center website and have your student fill out their profile. All right, we have Mandy. Um, Mandy hasn't told us where Mandy's from, which is totally fine. Um, so we will respect that. Um, so the question are, are there plans for the university to provide more on-campus housing for continuing students? Great question, Mandy. And the answer is yes. Um, so there's um, a lot of work happening in relation to this space. As you are well aware, um, Berkeley, the city of Berkeley, and the demands for housing is quite great. Uh, and this impacts our students, and this is something that a lot of people are working on and trying to figure out how to best support our students and, to be honest, our faculty and staff uh, in relation to housing here in the Bay Area. Um, so there are efforts being put in place around a housing master plan and what the future of housing would look like uh, for our students on campus. And we've actually started construction on a new facility. Um, so this is one example 
uh, of how we're expanding our housing options for the future. And it's right down the street uh, on Bancroft here. Um, I think it's 2400 Bancroft at the address. Um, and it's the old Styles Hall building. And uh, Styles Hall has moved to a different location during the construction and be moving back in. Uh, but it's going to be a state-of-the-art residence hall uh, for our students. And that is planned to open um, as early as fall 2018. Um, we're still going to have some challenges in the short term, but the campus is moving toward uh, establishing more housing in our future uh, and more opportunities for our students to live um, on campus uh, here at Cal. Great. All right. Next, we have David. Uh, does CALP promote the safety of all student groups, including conservatives? Great question. Um, again, I am the dean of all students, and I'm the dean of all student organizations. <laughs> and, and we treat all of our student organizations the same. Uh, and I treat all of our students the same. Um, and so in relation to you know, whatever it might be. And it, me as a person, I try to leave any, any kind of politics that I even have off campus because I think it's, it's very important for all students to feel that they can come to me and speak to me about whatever is going on in their life uh, and that I have an open door available to them. Um, so we work with all of our student organizations um, in the same way. Uh, now, with that said, depending on what's going on on the campus, what's going on in our politics, in our nation, uh, different student organizations might need different needs at different times. Uh, and we activate those needs in, in support of those students, uh, depending on what is happening in that particular context, whether it's impacting a student organization or whether it's impacting individuals. Um, so, for example, um, we have an incredible team on our on campus uh, through our student affairs case, ma case management team. Uh, and I oftentimes, when students or student organizations are really struggling and it's starting to impact them uh, in regarding impacting their academics, maybe impacting the stress, is impacting wellness and things of that nature, but I make sure that those students are getting connected to the resources that they need in order to persevere and be resilient uh, in that group of time and get the support that um, and so um, that's a lot of what I do. I think of myself a little bit kind of like a conductor of an orchestra and making sure that all the different resources and things that are happening with students and their unique needs uh, come to my attention in order to help them navigate the campus and get to the right places. So I hope that answered your question. Tina, how's it going, Tina? I hope you're doing well. Uh, Tina's up next. It's very exciting. Uh, so Tina's question is, uh, my student did not get a housing offer for next year, and the cost of off-campus housing has to seriously consider her possibly transferring to another UC. Oh, no, Tina. Uh, where housing is not so outrageous or hard to find. Uh, she wants to stay at Cal, but for student to have to consider rent uh, of more than 1500 a month is just cost prohibited suggestions so there are some suggestions to you um, so one is you can work with our housing office although we have limited amount of housing on our campus they do help in um, providing some resources to find housing off campus um, so i would recommend in utilizing that resource in order to see what the uh, possibilities are and what is available um, in those spaces. Um, a lot of students, I would think too about, I don't know if your student is part of a student organization or a group of friends, but um, a lot of students um, have learned to network with each other and to be able to work with uh, teams and to um, kind of take over um, um, I don't know if landlords would like me saying all this, <laughs> but to you know, take over leases and so forth. So there's just a continual change in that space, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden those costs go up um, a lot. Um, that is more an in-person peer network uh, that I would ask that you know, your student really talk around and let um, fellow peers and fellow students know that um, they are looking for a place and if they know of anything of that nature as well. Um, in that space. Um, 
and um, in terms of other things that I can do, I would just you know direct your student to me. Uh, I'd be happy to if if they don't know where to get connected and and so forth, you, they can get directed to me. Um, the service that I was talking about before that can help as far as your student in the area is called Cal Rentals, um, and Cal Rentals can kind of um, help your student kind of seeing what the housing stock is like in the Berkeley area. Um, I believe the website is calrentals.berkeley.edu. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, and Tina, I hope, hope your students are able to stay at Cal Golden Bear. All right, now we have um, Polly Barry Paulson. Um, and is, a Cal, is Cal going to provide free transportation around campus? Uh, perhaps an agreement with Lyft. Great question. Um, I don't know about the Lyft piece. Um, and so um, we have a shuttle, uh, we have service uh, that does provide free service around campus. We also have uh, other transit um, with uh, the AC transit. Uh, in agreement with them that helps and supports our students um, as well. In regarding Lyft, um, that's something that I'm going to have to look further into for you um, because um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if there is an agreement at this point in time uh, with any other providers similar to Lyft uh, in order to provide free transportation. But there are a number of means in order to assist your student around transportation and free transportation. Um, what I'd like to say too, just so people know, I live in, I do not own a car, um, so just give you a sense of transportation in the Bay Area, and if you're concerned about it, uh, for your student, um, I live in San Francisco, um, not even along the BART line, um, and I'm able to get to and from work every day relatively easily, um, and the transportation is you know, really good uh, overall in the Bay Area uh, in order to help people. Uh, in that space. So, um, so I hope that helps. Um, and if I get more information, and if we have your contact information, I'll have David uh, reach out to you and see if there's any other thing going on that I'm not familiar with regarding transportation. So, all right. Uh, next we have Joel Tooley. Um, so Joel is asking, what is the current percentage of students graduating in four years and future projections with the increase of students? All right, um, I hate to throw numbers out there because I don't have it exactly in my head right now, but it's somewhere around, I believe, 78% uh, of our students are graduating around four years. And I, I'll have to get that number exact. Um, our retention rates in general are really great. Um, and retention rate going from our first to second year and also our, our four-year retention rates um, overall. And so, so I feel very positive about that. Uh, with the increase in students, and um, I understand that as a concern, um, but th that's not changing the quality and the level of work that we're trying to provide to all of our students. Um, and so we may have to, uh, like in the student life arena and stuff, we're kind of rethinking some things, but uh, the campus has actually looked not um, how to even status quo, but how to enhance uh, the student experience in a variety of ways, including the undergraduate initiative, uh, which has been looking at the academic as well as some of the co-curricular aspects. And then I am working with my team and looking at uh, also the co-curricular and kind of the student, Berkeley student life um, aspects and how we can continue to increase that uh, and enhance that for our students in the long run. Uh, given our current situation uh, regarding um, our size and also, to be honest, our current situation with budget, uh, but how do we continue to enhance the student experience so that every student, uh, when they look back on their Cal experience as a proud Cal alum, and do that with fondness. So, great. Well, I think we're about at time. Uh, wow, those were great questions. There were a lot of them. Uh, I thought this time may not go very well, but it actually went by really, really fast for me. I hope it was helpful for you. Um, so, um, if you want um, to you know, give us your email uh, for any other questions and so forth, please do so uh, using the same mechanism. 
um, and um, and then also if you have particular questions, and we'll get some answer those answers to you uh, regarding your questions. And again, I just want to thank you personally uh, for allowing me to have the opportunity and the honor uh, to be able to partner with your student um, here at Cal during their time. And I just want to thank you for your contributions to our to our campus and to your student experience. And of course, how can we not end without a a go bear. So are you on the count of three? Do it with me. I know none of us are seeing each other, but no one's going to talk. All right. Are you ready? One, two, three. Go Bears! Take care.